Hey everybody, welcome to the Woodsmith Shop. On this episode of Woodsmith Makes, I'm gonna take you into the back shop at our magazine studio and show you how I built this farmhouse table. So let's check it out.
So let's take a look at a few of the design elements on this table. Now I was asked to build this uh, by a friend of mine and when she was talking to me about tables, um, initially she was showing me a picture off of uh, a Pinterest site um, that had a table uh, that was built by somebody that was using construction grade lumber. Now I'm not going to ever discourage anybody from picking up some tools and building a table like that. But I know that those tables probably are only going to last a few years. And I know we wanted this one to really last a lifetime. So when we were designing it, we decided to change the legs out to be, instead of a trestle style, they're turn style. Uh, and those legs, I didn't turn those. Uh, I'm not a great turner, and heck, I'm not even a good turner. Um, I probably could have came up with the legs if I wanted, but for the time I'd invest in them, I went ahead and purchased those off an Etsy store. And they're from a company called Carolina Leg Company. And I was actually really impressed with them. They're hard maple, they're five by five, and they're really beefy and they have a nice presence on the table. And to connect those four legs, uh, we have the stretchers that surround the table. And those are connected with a mortise and tenon, so they're gonna last a long time. I believe those tenons are two inches long. So uh, there's a big connection point there and they're not gonna go anywhere. Uh, and in addition, uh, we added the a decorative bead around the lower end of the apron. And that's kind of just a classic traditional farmhouse style. Uh, it breaks up that and gives it a nice soft edge on the lower side. And the top here is 3 8 of an inch thick red, uh, red oak, uh, and it's solid, so it, it is heavy. And I've, I've flipped this top a couple times while I was working on it. And it's heavy, um, but it's hard and it's gonna stand up to abuse uh, that I know her and her family's gonna put it through. Um, the stain on the top is a custom stain that she had mixed up to match uh, some trim in her house. And then I glazed it over with a uh, gray paint, uh, wiped that off to give it just kind of a haze of gray. And then it's finished with lacquer. And it's pre-cat lacquer, it's sprayed, uh, and it should uh, stand up really well to the abuse. Uh, pre-cat lacquer is a very, very tough finish. And for the base, we went ahead and did a painted base. And I painted this with two different coats and two different colors. So first I sealed the entire base with a pre-cat lacquer. Then on top of that, I sprayed a, uh, a base of gray. And it's actually the same gray I used to glaze the top. And then I went back and I hit this in a few areas with Modern Masters Latex Crackle. What that does is that gives you the nice crackle effect that we have on the legs and a few parts of the aprons. And then I sprayed that with the top coat of white. And it's actually a, a mixture of antique white and snow white. Um, it's kind of a, a warm white color. But as soon as you spray that, it starts to crackle where you put that Modern Masters crackle at. And it's really a cool aged appearance. And I believe she's going to take this and age it a little bit further. But I'll let her decide how far she wants to go with that. But overall, I'm really happy with it. Um, the breadboard ends are going to keep the top nice and flat. It's not going to want a cup or bow. Uh, I took into account the expansion and contraction of the top. So it's attached on both sides and both ends. The ends are just uh, screwed on through holes in the aprons. And the sides are actually screwed through the aprons into slots. So there's room for that top to expand and contract as the humidity changes. And that's the biggest thing with a hardwood top like this. It's going to grow and it's going to shrink as the humidity changes in the house. Uh, if you don't have something that's going to hold it flat, like breadboard ends, it's going to want a cup. And if you screw it to the base without allowing some expansion slots, it's eventually going to crack. Either the base will crack or the top will crack. But overall, I'm very, very happy with how it turned out. I'm going to deliver it this weekend, uh, and I'm excited for her to finally see it. So if you like this type of build, we're going to be doing more of these in the series that we're calling Woodsmith Makes. So make sure you subscribe. Click the bell to get notifications when we upload new videos, and thanks for watching. <laughs>